as we add more JavaScript syntax into our toolbox, the expressiveness and also the complexity of our programs is going to grow faster and faster. In this video, I'm going to describe some strategies about how to manage that complexity and how to approach coding in general and also within this course how to approach uh, learning the material and understanding what's happening. First, I'm going to begin with a description of the beginning of the coding process. How do I know where to start and how do I know what to build? The beginning of the process always starts with language. How can you be as specific as possible about how you want the program to work and what it's supposed to do? And this doesn't have anything to do with coding. This is just being very specific about uh, what each part of the program does. The second part would be to write some pseudocode, uh, some English language that more closely resembles the kind of code that you want to write. The third thing is that if anything is ambiguous to you, then you just need to clarify that. And that either means making decisions for yourself, making some assumptions about what you want that behavior to be, or to ask whoever gave you that spec of behavior. Next is to be able to split the program into different parts and be able to talk about each separate part. And this also has to do with the idea of like, where do you start within a program? Of all the parts that you've separated out, which ones do you work on first? So there's two answers to this question, uh, two uh, strategies, and these can vary depending on what kind of program it is and how many steps there are. Uh, one is to just simply work on each part in chronological order. So you know at the beginning of the program, uh, either something happens or the user gives input, and that marks the beginning of the program. Uh, if you don't know where to start, one strategy could be to begin at that uh, beginning part of the program. The other strategy is to decide what the main part of the program is and begin working on that from chronological order. Uh, so the main part of the program can be defined in different ways. Uh, some people also call this the MVP or the minimum viable product. It just means if you boil down what the, pro uh, what the program does to its essential nature, uh, what are those parts and what is the program really actually doing uh, at its core? Once you have those parts and you understand the order that you're going to work on those parts in, then you need to make the next step of taking your pseudocode or your high level description of what the program needs to do for that specific part and begin thinking about what kind of JavaScript you want to write. This process of translating the high level description of what you want the program to do into JavaScript syntax is a matter of practice and experience. And after you've done it a bunch of times, you'll be able to employ some pattern recognition uh, to be able to know that a certain kind of case, a certain kind of behavior that you want is going to automatically translate to a certain JavaScript syntax. Generally speaking, if your pseudocode or your statement about this part of the program has the words, if this, then, then you probably require uh, a conditional somewhere in that part of the code. If your description says that this part of the program does X, and especially if this X is composed of other discrete actions, then that probably means that you need a function. If there's a part of the description that does the same action over and over again, then that also means that you could want a function. If your description says do n times or repeat or for each or for every, then that's the kind of language that indicates you might want a loop or a loop in an array. Those are some descriptions of language that may indicate that you might need a certain kind of JavaScript control flow. The other kind of translation that you're going to need to do is from the description of the kind of data that you're working with into JavaScript data types and into the ways that you're going to need to store that data inside of variables. Um, so is this data encoding a binary uh, value or true or false value? Is it encoding a kind of value that you're doing math operations on? Uh, is it encoding a kind of value that's multiple words with spaces and punctuation? So depending on 
what kind of operations you're doing in that data may indicate uh, what kind of data types you want and how you want to store them in variables.